Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about hyperparameter bias variance trade-off in a random forest. In our previous classes, we clearly discussed how to construct the random forest. So please watch our previous class and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. So coming to today's class, uh, so let's refresh the concepts of random forest first, then we go into the concept of hyperparameter. So what we discussed in our previous class, this is our training data set. So in random forest, what we do here is uh, we will collect some random samples of row sampling and column sampling. We do row sampling and column sampling. Uh, so on that uh, sample data, sample data 1, we will construct a high variance decision tree. Like that same way, con collect some row sample and column samples uh, and uh, make it as selection data to and construct a decision tree, high variance decision tree. Like this, we constructed k decision trees. Uh, means how many models we have constructed here? k models. And what we do here for prediction is we will aggregate the predicted values. Uh, so this method we call it as bootstrap sampling. Sampling the data we call it as bootstrap sampling and aggregation. So this method we call it as bagging. Means uh, bootstrap uh, aggregation. Uh, so this is what we do in random forest. Uh, so what we discussed in our last class is bagging reduces variance as the individual models are high variance models but our aggregation is reducing the variance that is what we discussed in our previous class. So reducing the variance means our model is not moving towards overfitted that is what it is doing. How it is doing is for a small change in data if our model changes much that is what we call it as high variance models. But if there is a small change in data set, uh, our aggregate value is not changing much. That's why bagging is reducing uh, variance. Uh, as the number of models increases, for a small change in data, the effect of uh, change in data on our aggregated value is still less when compared to previous values because uh, we are increasing the number of models. So, k number of models means we are increasing the k value so k is taken as hyperparameter as the k value increases uh, the effect of change in data on our aggregated value is becoming less as the effect is becoming less means uh, we are moving away from the high variance models that is why k is taken as hyperparameter as k is increasing uh, variance decreasing uh, all these concepts overfitting why it is all these concepts were clearly discussed previously we are in as assumption that you we are you are following us from the beginning so that you will have a better understanding of the complete machine learning concepts okay coming to k is taken as hyperparameter we have to identify the best k value and at the same time we can take row sampling values is also as hyperparameter in our last class when we discussed that we are taking 50 percent of the data points as a sample data points why we have to take 50 percent 60 percent 65 percent 70 percent 75 percent so you can consider both the values k and row sample values as hyperparameters you can identify the best hyperparameter k and row sample value in our decision tree when we discuss the coding of decision tree we consider two hyperparameters what are those depth of the decision tree and number of samples like that same way in grid search cv we given two hyperparameters like the same way we can give k and row sample values as hyperparameters and we can identify the best k and row sample values but what they do here is as the row sample values and column sampling values reduces variance reduces why why because as the row sampling values and column sample value reduces variance decreases why it is decreasing means if you are taking very little amount of small amount of row sample and column sample values the decision tree constructed on this sample data is high variance data but, but when it is compared with the complete data and complete columns it is not that much specific about the each and every data point if it is not that much specific about each and every data point means it is not high variance it is not that much specific if it is specific it is high variance that's why as the row sampling and column sampling value reduces variance decreases based on this what they do here is they keep fixed the row sampling and column sampling values based on the data set if you are having the large data sets they keep it fixed like 
uh, row sampling value 50 percent column sampling value 40 percent like that they keep it fixed and they, and try to increase the number of models k, as k value increases variance decreases and we get the best testing accuracy value okay based on the data set they will fix these values 50 percent 40 percent if the sample size is small they will keep it more number of points if the sample size is much they will reduce the percentage of the points like that they based on the data set they will fix these values and increase the number of models so k is taken as hyperparameter so what what we do here is a number of models has taken as x axis and y axis accuracy testing accuracy so as the k values increases our accuracy testing accuracy increases and at some k value after that our accuracy won't increase it will be flat like a straight line so this value is considered as the best k after this if you keep on increasing that but our testing accuracy won't increase we will identify based on this so best k value okay so k is considered as the hyperparameter in random forest okay hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.